Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We will begin the webinar in one minute. Hello everyone. Welcome to today's, to today's webcast and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Rachel Gross and I'm a member of Data Support, the group engaged by HAB to provide training and technical assistance to Ryan White recipients and project officers during the submission and acceptance of the PTR and allocations report. Today's webcast is presented by James Tedro, also from the Data Support team. And James is going to provide an overview of the steps recipients take to complete the PTR allocation report and um, a step-by-step -step guidance for how to review and accept the PTR all allocations report using the web system. At any time during the presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the question function on your control panel on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and you'll also be able to ask questions directly live at the end of the presentation. And you can do that by clicking the raise hand button on your control panel and we'll conference you in. All right, now I'm going to turn over, uh, turn the presentation over to James. Hi, James. Hi, Rachel. So in today's webcast, I'll discuss how to access the PTR allocations report, do an overview of the steps a project officer should take in reviewing the PTRs, and then round it out with an overview of the submission timeline, followed by a review of the available technical assistance resources. Let's get started. First, I would like to discuss a valuable resource for recipients during the submission, submission process, the PTR Allocations Report Instruction Manual. This manual was developed by Data Support and has been reviewed by all program parts for accuracy. The manual provides step-by-step -step instructions for recipients on how to complete the PTR Allocations Report. The manual is valuable in assisting you and recipients on how to complete their respective reports. This resource is available for download on the Target Center website, but if you have questions, please contact Data Support. I'll start by explaining something that I'm sure a lot of you already know. Who completes a PTR and who completes an allocations report? Program parts A, B and B supplemental complete a PTR, while parts C and D are only required to complete an allocations report. For program parts A, B, and B supplemental, the PTR must include all the following program term requirements according to the NOA. For part A, the Ryan White HIV AIDS program part A and MAI planned allocations table and signed letter from Planning Council Chairs endorsing priorities and allocations, the Planning Council membership roster and reflectiveness, the revised SF424A and budget narrative, the fiscal year 2018 implementation plan, and the consolidated list of contracts or CLC local pharmacy assistance program profile. Part B and B supplemental recipients must include the Ryan White Part B Consolidated List of Contracts, or CLC, the Ryan White Part B and MAI Allocation Report, 
the revised SF424A, the revised budget narrative spreadsheet, the revised implementation plan, and the contract review certification, CRC. And as previously mentioned, Part C and D only complete the allocation report. Now let's go over how to access a PTR or allocations report. First, log into the HRSA EHBs. From the home page, select the Folders tab at the top of the screen. On the new screen, under the Folders list, select View on the Grant Folders row. Enter the parameters that you want to search by, and then select Search on the right side of the screen. On the bottom of the page, your search result will be displayed. Select the Grant folder on the right side of the screen for the report you would like to access. Once inside the Grant folder, select Access PTR under this program-specific system header. You are now in the PTR Allocations Report inbox for the grant you selected. You may now access the 2018 report and begin your review by selecting the envelope icon. Some project officers have reported not being able to see the reports in the inbox. If this occurs, click Search Reports on the navigation toolbar. You'll now be on the Search Reports page. To find a recipient's 2018 PTR, simply make sure 2018 annual is selected under Budget Year and then hit Search. The 2018 report will now be displayed in the PTR inbox. The 2018 PTR comprises four sections, grantee information, file upload, CLC report or consolidated list of contractors report, and the allocations report. I will discuss each of these sections in detail in the coming slides. Once you open the report, the first section you will see is grantee information. This section is automatically populated with information from the recipient who completed the report. It is a good idea to ensure that the contact listed is the best contact for the organization so that if changes need to be made, the organization will be easily reachable. The next section is File Upload. The File Upload feature allows recipients to upload documents to the web system and for POs to retrieve the information. The File Upload feature does not allow POs to upload documents to the system. Part A recipients will not use this feature. Part A recipients will upload all required documents into the EHBs. Part A project officers receive training on how to access Part A recipients' documents. This feature allows Part B and Part B supplemental recipients to upload all required documents for the PTR. These required documents include the SF-424A, the budget narrative, the implementation plan, and the contract review certification. To download a file from this system, select the blue links under the Upload File column. For Part C and Part D recipients, there are no required documents to upload. However, if you have requested that a program upload a document with their allocation report, you should be able to locate it here. The next section is the CLC report. CLC the CLC report is generated from the information that recipients entered into the Grantee Contract Management System, or GCMS. If changes need to be made to the CLC report, recipients will need to edit this information in the GCMS and synchronize the changes. Changes can only be synchronized when the report is in working status, however. To view a digital version of the report, on the left-hand navigation panel, select CLC Report. 
This brings up a screen that will be similar to what you see here. You can select the box next to each contract to review, to review the services allocated to each subrecipient. If you'd rather view the CLC report in another file format, such as Excel or Word, simply click the Print Export CLC Report link on the navigation panel, which will open up a new screen where you can export the CLC report in several different file types. The next section is the allocations report. Some of this information is entered directly into editable boxes on the allocations report page. Other information, such as the tables seen here, which is found further down on the allocations report page, is populated from information entered into the GCMS and can only be edited within the GCMS. Similar to the CLC report, the allocations report can be viewed in multiple ways. You can select allocations report under the navigation header to view the digital version, or you can use the print export allocations report link under the reports header to download the Excel version. When reviewing the allocations report, you will want to ensure that all editable fields are correct, in particular, the total award amounts. These editable fields drive the validation parameters that the system uses. Speaking of validations, let's take a look at a validation report, which we can access by clicking Validate under the Actions header on the navigation panel. The system has three categories for report problems, errors, warnings, and alerts. Errors must be fixed, Warnings require a comment for submission, and alerts are informational. Recipients are able to submit their report with alerts. The web system creates a system-level report that will assist you in identifying irregularities in recipients' reports. As a project officer, you will never see a validation error when reviewing a report. This is because the system would not allow a recipient to submit a report with a problem classified as an error. However, your recipients may ask for help resolving errors, in which case you can feel free to direct them to data support. During your review, you will see alerts and warnings. As mentioned, alerts are informational and may let you know about more pressing problems within the report. Warnings, however, require an explanation from the recipient. If you see a warning, you'll want to read the recipient's explanation by selecting the number in the comment count column. If you find that you need to communicate with the recipient within the web system, you should utilize the comment section. Comments in this section are not editable once saved and are visible to recipients. To access this feature on the left-hand navigation panel, under Comments, select Add Comments. When the page refreshes, you'll be able to view all comments that have been entered by either yourself or recipient. To add your own comment, select the Add Comment button on the bottom of the page to bring up a comment box. This year, there is a new feature that allows you and recipients to add attachments, attachments to comments. To do so, you can utilize the attachment upload area. Once you are done entering in your comment and or adding attachments, hit save. This is a good place to put requested revisions that you'd like your recipients to make to their reports. Recipients can also enter replies here. Many times, there are communications that need to occur strictly between the project officer and the project quality controller, or PQC. These communications can relate to a variety of topics. The Manage Issues section allows this communication to occur within the web system. On the left-hand navigation panel, under Actions, select Manage is Issues. To enter notes, select the green plus sign by, by add new issue slash question. The page will refresh and you will be able to enter a note, indicate the status, and finally save. 
The Manage Issues sections cannot be accessed by recipients. These comments that you enter here are editable, and there is a feature that allows you to indicate if a comment is active. Congratulations, you've made it to the end. You're ready to either return the report or send it to the PQC for review. On the left-hand navigation panel, select PO Review. You will see the screen displayed here. You must enter a comment and select one of the three options. Recommend as acceptable, recommend as acceptable with concerns, or request change. You want to enter a meaningful comment within this section that will be beneficial to the recipients either, either this reporting period or for future reporting periods. Perhaps you can add notes that may be helpful during future site visits, or feel free to enter a positive note to recipients, such as agency completed report on time despite staff turnover. Enter any comment that you feel is meaningful and helpful to recipients. Finally, select the Submit button to either send it back to the recipient or onward to the PQC. The PQC will follow a similar process as stated on the previous slide. PQCs will select PQC Review, add a comment, and select whether or not you'd like to accept the report, return the report to the PO, or return the report to the recipient. Once complete, select Submit. Let's now go over the submission timeline. The Part A PTR is due on August 30th, 2018. The Part B X07 PTR is due on September 13th, 2018. And the Part B Supplemental X08 PTR is due on December 31st, 2018. The Part C and Part D allocations reports are due on October 31st, 2018. However, it's always a good idea to encourage your recipients to submit sooner rather than later. Here are Ryan White Technical Assistance resources available to you and your recipients. Data support addresses PTR-related content and submission questions. The HRSA Contact Center provides assistance with the EHVs. The Target Center has a wealth of materials and links related to all things Ryan White, including both the PTR and GCMS instruction manuals, which I've also linked to here. I'd now like to take a moment to thank everyone for joining us on today's presentation, and I will now turn it back over to Rachel for the Q&A portion of the webinar.